Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about ankle and foot kinesiology or biomechanics. So some of the basics we will be reviewing here that is we will be discussing about the basic anatomy of the foot and ankle. The term ankle primarily refers to the joint that is called as talocrural joint. Talocrural joint is formed by the bones which are talus, tibia and fibula. So you can see the picture here the talocrural joint is formed between the upper articulating surface or the dome of the talus also called as trochlear notch of the talus and some part of the fibula and some part of the tibia. So this is called as ankle joint or talocrural joint. The foot refers to all the bones and the structures after the talocrural joint or distal to the ankle joint. We can divide foot into three sections. You can see here first one the nude color is the rear foot, uh, middle one the blue color is the midfoot and the gray color is the forefoot. So the hind foot or also called as rear foot consists of the talus and the calcaneum bone as you can see here the talus and the calcaneum bone. This hind foot also consists of the subtalar joint that is the joint formed between the talus and the calcaneum bone. So if somebody asks you about the subtalar joint then you have to remember that the joint is formed by the talus and the calcaneum. If somebody asks you about the ankle joint then it is a talocrural joint between the talus, tibia and fibula. Now next what is midfoot? The midfoot, what does midfoot consist of? Midfoot consists of the navicular bone, the cuboid bone, the cuneiform bone which are the medial three cuneiform bones. We have three cuneiform bones, one cuboid and one navicular bone. These are called as tarsal bones. So the joints forming uh, between the calcaneum and the cuboid that is calcaneum cuboid joint and the tallow navicular joint is also coming under the midfoot and all the joints form between the navicular and the cuneiform cuneiform in the cuboid and cuboid and the navicular bone this also comes under midfoot now next is the forefoot as you can see the gray section of the uh, foot this is called as forefoot which consists of the metatarsals phalanges so we have five metatarsals, five proximal phalanges, four middle phalanges and five distal phalanges. Now let's review the bone one by one. Just the basic about the bone to understand the joints and later on we can discuss the osteokinematics. So the first bone is the fibula. So you can see here the picture, red color. It is thinner than the tibia. So the fibula is a long and thin bone and it transfers only 10% of the body weight. It ends distally with the formation of lateral malleolus. Here you can see the lateral malleolus which is the projection on the lateral side of the foot which is the projection of the fibula called as lateral malleolus. The lateral malleolus functions as a pulley for the muscles, especially the peroneus muscle and the distal surface has an attachment or a facet for the talus on the medial side as well as for the tibia. The next bone is the tibia. The distal tibia ends with the formation of medial malleolus. We had discussed that the fibula ends with the lateral malleolus. Similarly, the uh, tibia ends with the medial malleolus which is palpable on the medial side of the ankle joint. The medial malleolus transfers 90% of the load to the ankle joint. So therefore this is the primary bone which takes weight. It has one notch for talus and one for the fibula. So you can see here on the lateral side it has a notch for the uh, fibula and on the uh, inferior side it has a notch for the talus. Next bone and very important bone is the talus. So the some of the important parts of talus is the trochlear surface which is the superior surface as we talked about. 
previously it is the dome shaped uh, surface which articulates with the tibia to form the talocrural joint or ankle joint it has a head anteriorly which articulates with the navicular bone it has a neck and it has importantly three facets which is anterior middle and posterior facets this anterior middle and posterior facets are situated inferiorly and it articulates with the calcaneum bone to form the subtalar joint next bone is the calcaneum the calcaneus has a calcaneal tuberosity which is important for the attachment of the achilles tendon the tendon which is the elongation of the gastrosoleus muscle the calcaneus also has an anterior middle and posterior facets which are situated on the superior surface of the calcaneum this anterior middle and posterior facets articulates with the anterior middle and posterior facets of the talus so the anterior middle and posterior facets of the talus are situated inferiorly whereas anterior middle and posterior facets of the calcaneum are situated superiorly so this articulation forms the subtalar joint the calcaneus also has a, a projection which is prominent and is called as sustentaculum talus the next bone is a navicular bone the name comes from its shape which is navy or it looks like a ship and it has three facets anteriorly here you can see it has a three facets which articulates with the cuneiform posteriorly it articulates with the head of the talus where its surface or the articulating surface is concave whereas the head of the talus is convex the next bone is the cuneiform bone we have three cuneiform bone uh, this all comes under the tarsal bones uh, the cuneiform bone we have medial intermediate and lateral cuneiform bone and the most lateral bone is called as the cuboid now further anteriorly we have metatarsals we have five metatarsals further anterior to metatarsals we have proximal phalanges we have intermediate phalanges and we have five distal phalanges so let's review the joints now coming to the joints the proximal tibiofibular joint or also called as superior tibiofibular joint is identical to our superior radial nerve joint this proximal or superior tibiofibular joint is formed between the proximal uh, end of the fibula and the proximal end of the tibia so the bony components are the proximal end of the fibula and proximal end of the tibia the head of the fibula and the lateral condyle of the tibia articulates to form tibiofibular joint now coming to in inferior or distal tibiofibular joint again the bony components are the tibia and fibula but it is the distal end of the fibula and the distal end of the tibia and it is formed between the medial surface of the fibula and the fibular notch of the tibia which is facing laterally uh, we also have a syndesmosis or a bond by a interosseous membrane between the fibula and the tibia so these are two joints which are proximal to the ankle joint or talocrural joint which is called as tibiofibular joint there is a little movement permitted in this uh, joint as it is strongly supported by the ligaments now next important joint is the talocrural joint as we have already known that talocrural joint is the ankle joint and the bony components forming the ankle joint or the talocrural joint is the dome shaped trochlea of the talus or the superior articulating surface of the talus and side of the talus which articulate with the tibia it articulates with the rectangular cavity formed by the distal tibia and fibula which is also called as mortis so the lateral uh, so the lateral as you can see here uh, which i'm drawing the sketch the lateral malleolus and this articulating surface 
and the medial malleolus, the tibia and the fibula forms a shape which is a rectangular type of cavity inferiorly this is called as mortis so this articulates with the upper dome or the trochlea of the talus bone a thin capsule surrounds this joint to reduce any type of friction the reinforcement by the medial and lateral collateral ligament stabilizes and supports the joint you can see here in the picture above this is the medial collateral ligament which is also called as deltoid ligament it has a three slip uh, connecting from the calcaneum navicular and the talus to the tibia inferiorly you can see the lateral collateral ligament which is the posterior tibiofibular ligament anterior tibiofibular ligament and calcaneofibular ligament now coming to subtalar joint the subtalar joint as we already know is formed between the talus and the calcaneum so we also have further discussed that the calcaneum has uh, three facets superiorly that is anterior facet middle facet and posterior facet similarly the talus also has inferiorly three facets anterior facet middle facet and posterior facets so these three facets articulate with each other that is anterior facet of the talus articulate with anterior facets of the calcaneum middle facet of the talus articulate with the middle facet of the calcaneum and posterior facet of the talus articulate with posterior facet of the calcaneum so this forms the subtalar joint the 70 percentage of the joint formed by the posterior facet as you can see it is large this joint is enclosed by capsules and reinforced by ligaments such as lateral middle and posterior talo calcaneal ligament now next coming to talo navicular joint the talo navicular joint is part of transverse tarsal joint it is formed between the talus and the navicular bone you can see here the joint formed between the talus and the navicular bone the anterior surface or the head of the talus is convex whereas the navicular bone articulating with the talus is concave the ligaments the important ligament that support this joint inferiorly is called as spring ligament or plantar calcaneo navicular ligament this is an important ligament which you can see here in this picture this ligament which supports from inferiorly when we are standing this ligament uh, prevents the talus displacing from the navicular bone so therefore this ligament is important for maintaining the arch of the foot now next is the calcaneo cuboid joint calcaneum cuboid joint is formed between the calcaneum and the cuboid bone uh, you can see here laterally so the bony components are the calcaneus and the cuboid there is very less motion and the ligaments are supporting this joint firmly other joints are the cuneo navicular joint which is formed between the navicular bone and the cuneiforms then we have cuboid navicular joint which is formed between, between the cuboid and the navicular bone then we have intercuneiform joints you can see here intercuneiform joints and we have cunocuboid joint there is a tarsal metatarsal joint which we know that is the joint between the tarsal bone and the metatarsal bones we have metatarsophalangeal joint and the interphalangeal joint So these are some of the basic anatomy which we have discussed today and I hope you will be reading about it thoroughly, especially the ligaments which support all this joint. You can also refer the biomechanics book or kinesiology book which is Joint Structure and Function by Cynthia Norkin as well as the uh, book by Donald A. Newman. Thank you.